Hi everybody, Taryn here from Generation Health. Today I'm going to be covering facts. And so I want to go over two key points. First one I want to have a look at with you is what fats you should be eating most of, what you should be eating some of, what foods or what fats are the best to be cooking with your food, and also what fats we want to completely avoid. And the last point that I want to go through with you as well is I really want to address do fats actually make you fat because a lot of people can be concerned about that. So I'll address those two things. Let's start with which fats are the good ones. Alright, now the ones that are the best, the ones we should be eating the most of are your polyunsaturated fats. Now polyunsaturated and monounsaturated, they're both good fats as they're unsaturated. Um, but the ones that we want to be eating the most of because of your anti-inflammatory properties are your omega-3s. Now did you know that most of your brain, in fact 60% of your brain, is made of polyunsaturated fats? And 20% of your brain is DHA, which comes in fish. And so I want you to focus on um, increasing or adding fish or other um, sources of omega-3 um, like walnuts, flax seeds, and chia seeds. Now, there are many more, but I'm just going to highlight those four as being the top sources of omega-3. And just highlighting fish there, because out of the unsaturated fats, fish is the only one that is an animal source. And so they have a, um, a different DHA kind of fat. All right, then we want to look at your monounsaturated fats. Eat some. Okay, so compared to the polys where we want to eat most, Monos eat some because these are so much more readily available and accessible, accessible, and because of the way that in um, our Western culture, the way that we use omega-6s, we actually get way too many of these. The typical ratio in a Western diet, and this is very conservative, the typical ratio is we get 16 times monounsaturated fats to our polys, and that is way out of balance. And what can actually happen is, is that it can take away the benefits of monounsaturated fats. Like, for example, one of the key benefits for monounsaturated is to increase or improve LD, uh, sorry, HDL, which is the good cholesterol. However, when out of ratio um, to polyunsaturated fats consumed, monos can become very inflammatory. And so as an example, when I'm working with my clients, if someone has arthritis, severe um, arthritic symptoms, what it'll actually do is take the monounsaturated fats out and inflammation and therefore pain will go down, especially when doing that and increasing the polyunsaturated. So some of the omega-6s and 9s come from almonds, peanut butter, avocado and olive oil. So the best way to remember how to distinguish between polos and, sorry, polys and monos is that polys are uncommon and they're a little bit weird looking. Like walnuts, flax seeds, cheese seeds, they're very uncommon. As opposed to peanut butter, avocado, olive oil, um, these are much more common fats. So if it looks weird, not so common, likely to be an omega-3. And if it's very common, likely to, to be an omega-6. Okay, then let's look at saturated. One of the main differences I want to highlight between poly, mono, unsaturated fats and saturated is, is that the unsaturated fats are much more fragile when it comes to heat. And so that's why I put their saturated for cooking. Saturated fats stand a much more higher um, heat temperature when, when being um, heated. However, unsaturated fats are very unstable and fragile. So we'll know countries like Italy and, um, and the French when they use olive oils in their cooking, they're using them after the actual cooking process. So once the pasta has been cooked, they'll dress in olive oil. Once the veggies have been uh, steamed, they will dress. So these olive oils that they're using in their diet are always in their most wholest form, un unheated. And what they do this for is it preserves the, the flavor, it doesn't damage the flavor of the oil, but we also know that it doesn't damage the oil which is um, very unhealthy in terms of your, what it can do for your cholesterol. Saturated fat, however, can stand high heat temperature cookings and uh, cooking temperatures. And so when needed, use coconut oil um, or butter. So you'll find that saturated fats are much more solid at room temperature um, as opposed to unsaturated, which is more liquid and from a plant source. However, coconut oil is considered a plant 
um, source of saturated fat, so that is the exception to the rule there, um, but you will notice it's solid property. Now, um, when cooking meat, cook the meat in its own fat, um, but then I also do advise to keep your meats lean and not to eat the skin. All right, trans fats. So trans fats are the deadly fats, and we want to keep these out. We want to avoid these as much as humanly possible. Now, I know sometimes that it's nice to have sweet treats and things, but there literally are some trans fats that are easy to just cancel and eliminate from your diet. These fats are so deadly, they are actually illegal in some states, like California, for example, um, trans fats are illegal. Now, how does a fat become trans fats? Simply put, it's an unsaturated fat, so a perfectly good one, that has been heated and chemically hydrogenated. So by the use of heat and chemicals, it has completely changed its form. So an unsaturated fat, which is typically liquid and from a plant source, then being turned into a solid form, like for example, margarine. So olivani is a classic example. Olivani comes from the olive, so it's an unsaturated fat, which is fantastic and really good for you, but not in the form of olivani spread, as it has completely been served in a different form than what it naturally comes in. So all the properties that are beneficial in unsaturated fat have been completely destroyed and now will become harmful and these will increase the bad cholesterol and also cause a lot of free radical damage as well. Okay, the other things that it come in besides margarine are processed foods. So what you want to watch out for are your baked goods. Um, when you're baking at home, different story. When you're baking at home, you can use better quality fats, like you can um, bake in butter um, or using coconut oil. But when you're buying packaged goods that last forever, trans fats preserve the shelf life of those products. And so if they last forever, you'll know that they have trans fats in them. Okay, so eat most of your polys, eat some of your monos. Don't cook in poly and monos. For cooking, the best kind is saturated. And for trans fats, eliminate, eliminate the ones that are obvious to eliminate and reduce significantly um, the ones that are unavoidable for your whole entire life. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to address with you is do fats make you fat? All right, fats actually trigger no um, fat storage hormone. Okay, so when, we talk, when I talk about the liver, what I like to talk about is um, the fact that the liver... Um, metabolizes your fat okay and so the amount of fat that you should be consuming needs to be about a third to the amount of veggies that you're eating and that's conservative okay so if you're eating the optimal amount of veggies then what you're looking for is about two thumb sizes okay so two thumb size portions of fats three to four times a day all right three to four times a day would be Pretty significant, so you want to make sure that your veggie servings are up around five to seven servings a day. If not, then we want to be also equally conservative with the fat um, intake being around one to two of these servings per day. And the reason why that is is because remember that the, the liver is what um, breaks down fats, and if the liver is getting congested and, um, and a bit sluggish, then fats can also constipate you. Um, so you want to make sure that our veggie servings are up. As per carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, carbohydrates and sugars will stimulate a fat storage hormone called insulin. Therefore, this hormone stimulated will cause um, fat storage from eating too much of carbohydrate and most especially sugar. Um, protein, however, stimulates fat burning hormones like um, glucagon, insulin-like growth factor, human growth hormone, just to name a few. Um, however, when eaten too much protein at one time, yes, it will stimulate the fat storage. So just keep your portion sizes of um, protein to a palm. And when it comes to fat, fat is actually hormonally neutral. Okay, So it does not stimulate fat storage or fat burning hormones. So what we want to make sure of is that fats are there and in our diet regularly, most especially our polyunsaturated fats, and eat them to the degree that you are consistent with your vegetables. So either three to four servings a day, if you are getting in five to seven servings of vegetables, and um, two servings a day, two to three servings a day, if you are getting 
um, um, between four and five servings of vegetables a day. All right, so that's it for fats. Thank you so much. See you soon.